Hey guys, this is Vril with a new Crusader Kings 2 Let's Play series. So I gave you guys a poll of which CK2 series you wanted me to do next, and the Germanic ruler in 769 or 867 won. So I've decided to go with the 867 start date. There's a few interesting options here with the Sons of Ragnar Lothbrook, between Halfton Whiteshirt, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, Bjorn Ironside, or Ivar the Boneless. And the last one is the one I decided to go with, Ivar the Boneless. Now this will be a very difficult playthrough because he is a tribal ruler and succession will be elective gavelkind unless we can reform the Germanic faith. However, all of the holy sites for reforming are all over in Scandinavia and unless the AI characters can do that themselves, we are going to have to deal with that through this playthrough. The goal I have for myself will be to take over Scotland at first, then possibly Ireland, England, and Wales to create a Germanic Britannia. This will be quite difficult though, and I have set a rule for myself to stay Germanic if my character is forced to become Catholic, or my heir is Catholic, or any other religion for that matter, I'll go ahead and end the series at that point. Now Ivar the Boneless is an interesting character. There are a lot of questions about where the Boneless name comes from. Whether he had no legs, was impotent, or possibly he was very flexible. It seems very popular these days to say he has a genetic disease causing brittle bones since the 2003 BBC documentary called The Strangest Viking. This seems to be how the producers of the popular History Channel Vikings program are doing it. Whatever the reason, Paradox seems to take Ivar as a great military leader and nothing hints at him having any sort of genetic disease. So regardless of the outcome, let's see what this playthrough has in store. Alright, so getting started here with Jarl Ivar, let's have a look at his statistics. So he has decent diplomacy, pretty high martial, decent stewardship and intrigue, and relatively low learning skill. So he's got some pretty good traits though, like skilled tactician strong, he's of course viking, he's a hunter ambitious, nothing really negative at all here. The main negative is that he is 48 years old, so... Let's have a look at his heir here. So we have Barad Ivar's son, who isn't all that good. He's got decent entry. He might be our spy master or something like that. But that stewardship value at zero is not very welcoming. Let's have a look at uh, his other sons, like Sigtrig here. He's got a little bit better, although his stewardship isn't all that good either. And that was Barad. And let's hear, we've got Sigfroth, I think is his name. He's a more well-rounded character. Let's go ahead and, well, let's nominate, let's just have their look at their statistics here. I'm thinking to go with the one with the better diplomacy, slightly better with this Sigtrig, so I'll go with him. And I suspect that my vassals will probably vote him to, in too, so let's go ahead and marry him off. Here we've got the couple uh, court members from the Isle of Man. Let's go ahead and marry them off to one of them, and this is to the court chaplain of Man. So go ahead and do that. We've got... Of course, some ambitions. We need to pick an ambition. We'll go ahead and pick the Become King of Scotland ambition. And for a focus, let's see, we always do war. It'd be nice to have some extra health because he is getting up there in the age. So that leaves us between diplomacy, or sorry, family, and the hunting. So I go ahead and do the hunting. Uh, Jarl Ivar travels the realm making friends and killing off Odin's creatures. Okay. Actually, never read that before. That's kind of funny that it says that. Okay, so this is our army. We'll go ahead and merge these guys. Let's see, we've got... Olaf is our marshal, but I want him to actually be leading armies. So let's see if we can appoint somebody else to be our marshal. See if we can have our son be the marshal. And I think we'll need to pick a new commander, and that will be Olaf here. So Olaf has the defender trait, so that's 
good. It looks like here we also have a spy master who is a Catholic bishop. I think we're going to go ahead and get rid of this guy. And let me first pick somebody else, and that will probably... He does have a 12 intrigue, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to kill him. But we give it our best shot, and we'll have Dag be our... Our new spy master. Let me go ahead and look at where this guy was. I'm looking in the wrong area. Look at our vassal. So yeah, here he is. Go ahead and plot against him. And he is in the bishopric of Iona. So we'll put our spy master there. We actually want to build a spy. Uh, spy network there that's not scheme and we'll have our court chaplain who it's actually our mother Oslog who is married to Ragnar Lothbrook be our court chaplain and she'll be spreading the religion and the faith Germanic faith in Argyle there so for our steward we are able to build tribal armies at 500 prestige so let's go ahead and build prestige here in our capital and we'll have our marshal organize raids not really the best marshal for doing this but we want to probably have our better marshal leaders uh, leading our army so my son is this the guy we said to be the heir yes it is so that's, I'm going to be sending him off to so, distra, uh, so Descent, and that might not be the best idea for him, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, so everybody's, nobody's leading troops. So we did marry off, we didn't marry off this guy. Let's see if we can marry him off to the Gita of Nidaros. She's got decent statistics. I mean, for... For these guys, she is a lowborn though, and we have, are of course unmarried. I'm not going to worry about getting married, and not going to worry about this title that can be created either. Let's go ahead and call other allies to these wars. So we do have two wars. So we have the invasion of East Anglia, that's here, and then we have the invasion of Lothian, which is here. So our army is here let's make sure we have leaders on this army mostly comprised of light infantry so that might be slightly not as good as say like some heavy infantry or anybody that's mounted might have an advantage over us but that i guess that's accurate to the viking ways and germanic ways so I'm going to head on down to Suffolk and Norfolk and try to deal with this East Anglia war first. So let's go ahead and start progressing time. I'm going to have a new error. going to try to kill some of these guys while they're, while they're organizing. Maybe we can catch some of them and kill them off. So let's take the prestige. And our other son also got married too. And my son-in-law is going to join us as well. Okay, so we've got a new title. This is... Who else can be... Uh, this is Thorfinn, I think, is how that would be said. Not 100% sure. I'm going to be butchering a lot of names in this playthrough, so... Just as a warning. Okay. All right, so that worked well. I wonder if we can get anybody else. I'm not going to go after this stack. I'm gonna to head towards Suffolk and try to deal with that as soon as we can. Looks like we've got an allied ship that's going to join us here. So let's see if we can siege this off real quick. They joined us. And then we're going to attack that Norfolk stack. Now, we do have quite a few 
enemies, the allies here. We were at war with almost the entire Britannia, basically, here. And they're heading on up to siege some of our areas. Now, we do have Jorvik here is uh, at war for Northumbria, which is like this area here. So that should help us somewhat. Okay, so that stack became 5,000 now. I've got the East Anglia and Wessex with Earl Alfred. So I'm just waiting for this to siege out and then I'm going to attack Norfolk. I didn't want to attack them from Northampton because that would be crossing a river. So we should be slightly better shape doing this here. Okay, so we won the siege of Ipswich and we'll head towards Norfolk. Our leaders are all good. We've got 10,000 guys here. Should be winnable, I would think. Looks like they got somebody coming in to help, though. I wonder, okay, so they did have like more archers, more heavy infantry, things like that. That's what we're going to have to deal with. I think they even had some horse archers, not horse archers, but mounted cavalry there. And I'm going to split this army in two. Have one of them siege Norfolk and the other one can be sent back to Suffolk. So we'll keep an eye on if there's a stack that shows up here and remerge if we need to. We did attack with our lower morale army there. That wasn't as good of an idea. And we captured King Ethelred of Wessex, so that's good. Ethelred, I think is how you would say that. Should be able to maybe ransom him for some decent money. Can we ransom you for 145 gold, but nobody will accept it? Good to know. Uh-oh, we've got 3,000 stack, but they are crossing... crossing water there. Okay, well, we'll hang out here. Just keep an eye on what these guys are doing. Okay, so they are attacking again. So this army does not have all of its uh, leaders there. Okay, so they're still going to attack before we just double check here. We've got everybody's leading. Yeah, they're still going to try to attack. Okay, they're going to move to Suffolk now. And they're probably going to be slightly more difficult than that other stack because... Well, I was thinking that we're going to have to do a river crossing, but no, I think they are getting some reinforcements, unfortunately. So we've got this white stag event. Never actually, I don't think I've ever actually succeeded with that event. It's like Northumbria also has a large stack up there too. So I wonder if we can just like siege this one down before they can siege here, if we could somehow take over, but I don't think that's going to be possible. We'll see. We will see, up to 78. And down to 64. This is going to be very close. I'm a little bit worried here. I don't want to lose my entire army. Okay, we're losing some sieges up here. That's more with this uh, North Umbria war, though, up in Lothian. Well, can we siege out the rest of these? I wonder what it will give us. And yeah, they're not sieging anything down here. Yeah, this is going to take some time, I think. So up to 81%. And I don't think that sieging the city is going to move us over, but we'll see. We will see. 
you just bump up the speed slightly. At the fourth speed, it just seems to go slightly too quick, but at the uh, three speed, it's slightly too slow. So yeah, we actually we ticked over, 100% war score. So that was a close one. We will enforce our demands. We'll take over East Anglia, and that really. Not really all that interested in East Anglia, but we needed to win that war. We were going to take like 500 prestige hit if we surrendered, or White Peace would be a pretty major hit. So let's make sure that the bishopric here has a... Well, he's a... It's already got. That's not ours. Okay, so... City... This one does need a new... Vassal. So we got the county capital and the city. This one also needs a new vassal. So we did take these guys prisoner. And we still have this. Okay, we do have Edmund. Okay, so we I think we released that other guy. Or maybe he I don't know. Okay, so anyway, we do need to go back up north here to take over North Umbria, the uh, Lothian areas. So I would figure that there's quite a few... Uh, Jorvik, are they at war? Yeah, they are with King Ayla of North Umbria. Okay, well, so I think... Thordon might fancy me. That's my daughter-in-law. Should I make the move? <laughs> this is, uh... Maybe I should make the move and then deny that it's my child, if that so happens, because my statistics are much better than my son's. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll make the move. Give her a good tumble. It's good to be the Jarl. If they had somehow had a kid or something like that, I can say that you know it's not mine and it will be my son's kid i would think so maybe that will work out for us have a better error than we possibly could have had now i'm wondering where all of jorvik's army is did they just completely get demolished or right, he's no longer at war he lost the war to northumbria that's interesting i always thought they would he usually wins that uh so this is going to be worrying. There are no better men at increasing the church's opinion than my mother, Oslog. So I think we'll do the monthly piety. I think. I'm not too sure if that's a good idea or not. Now, just check... Is anybody else at war with so hostile from Helsingland are being raided? Okay. And then of course we're attacking them. Okay, so uh, Snorri, my steward, got us some raiders over here, so that's good. We can siege back some of these areas. Now, I thought there was quite a few large stacks uh, roaming around over here, so my lover here claims that she would be better court chaplain than my mother, and I do think she might. Yeah, she would. So she is the new court chaplain. My mother's. she's getting a little old. She's 67 years old, so I do think that she'd be better. Okay. Okay, well, we'll have her head over to Argyle, and we're probably going to lose this, although I think that's an attack, so we might be okay. Don't have any leaders on that army, though, as far as I know. Yeah, we've got uh, Kettle of Man, who's, I think, my lover's father. Okay. And we do need to go ahead and move this army on over to Lothian, I would say. So we actually did win that, and Taylor was captured and is now my prisoner. He's a nobody. He's a lowborn. So, um, 
think that Helfton's army was completely wiped out. Now, we can call him to help us out. I think I'm going to do that just because I'm not sure. There were some roaming bands that were... Yeah, they've got a lot of help over there, so let's go ahead and do that. Ask uh, my brother Bjorn to help us out. Just in case. Because I think after this, we're mostly going to be attacking single county provinces in Scotland. So hopefully you won't need as large of stacks to deal with any of this. So a daughter was born to Sigtrig Iverson. Thordan Kettle's daughter named Holmfred. So we'll go ahead and leave that. It seems my dalliance with Thordan has resulted in a child. So unfortunately... Okay, so... Sigtrig thinks that little the girl is his, so we lose a little bit of piety. That's good, that worked out. Unless, uh, let's have a look here. So she's my granddaughter, but is also actually my daughter as well, but doesn't uh, know that. So we'll see what our stats come out to be. Obviously she's 10 days old at this point. It looks like Halfton's actually doing something there for us. And these guys are sieging in Sudri are. Okay, now this is yeah, this is a little bit worrying here. Although we've got we've got six thousand. I thought we were a little bit lower than that. Okay, well. We I my son managed to sow some distrust there. Okay. Alright, but it does look like we're out of time for this episode, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.